Today, what are you doing? I am pitching my business in front of 200 people. Today's our first demo day, and she is one of three who are pitching. Sam and I didn't even have a company when, <laughs> when they were asking if we should be pitching something, so we're not pitching. Are we going with you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is Moana, Edgar's partner. <laughs> What's up? Are you excited yeah. to pitch? Always, always. I'm excited to see you pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This preparation means opportunity, so we did the preparation and now it's the opportunity, so let's close it up. Yeah. This is Kat's, everyone join win-win home sharing, and we're going to watch her pitch right now. Let's go. You guys can do that, which is why we're giving you access to mentors and funding and resources like you have here today at Scotia. So uh, just be reminded that's why you're here and uh, that's why we're all here today. And so what you'll see here today is a preview of what's to come. Uh, we've taken some of the most interesting and compelling ventures from the three pillar programs, Next 36, Next Founders, and Next AI. Healthy athletes of the future train and motivate their community. And so who are these athletes fitness influencers? So let me introduce you to one of them. So here's Daniela, she shares her fitness journey from Instagram and YouTube, and is passionate about motivating her community towards their goals. I'm here to show you how we are about to disrupt two major industries. We are a home sharing platform that connects senior citizens who are looking for help around the house with students who want affordable rooms to rent. And in exchange for doing light chores like cleaning uh, the dishes or doing laundry, students enjoy half price rent, while senior citizens get paid to have their chores done for them. Often is an enterprise level carpool and shuttle service that's tackling one of the number one reasons employees leave their jobs. Bad commute. One hour each way, every single day. These are the commute times that most of us face on a regular basis. It's stressful, it's lengthy, and there's tricky and unreliable connections to mass transit. This is especially painful for 18 to 34 year olds who cite a bad commute as one of the main reasons for leaving their jobs. And so employers are now left desperate to retain this young talent. For me, it's remembering the brand you have behind you right now. Um, you know, you have all the access to everything, and if you don't use that, that's on you guys. Um, you have funding, you have mentorship, and, and that's that's really to me like the baseline. That's why you're here. Um, 
I think the only advice I would give uh, is, it's like being an Olympic athlete. Right now, you're in the Olympics, right? And people care about you. But a year after the Olympics, people can never really name that Olympian. So you need to be able to use this moment while you're in this program to use this brand. You guys have, obviously, all the time, all the mentorship, which is the, the definitive quantitative part of this program. But the qualitative part is, you can go to anybody in the room and say, I've I'm part of this program, which essentially is pre-qualified, selected the best. And entrepreneurs know that. I mean, we, you know, in, in this world, especially in Canada, right, Nexus built such a strong brand over the last, what, seven or eight years. Use that to your advantage. Um, because the minute you leave this program, um, you're an alumni, right? And it's no different, again, from being a Major League Baseball pro player versus being a retired Major League Baseball player. Uh, you know, there's a big, big difference in what you can achieve. Uh, so you're on a platform right now where people will listen to you. People want to look at you and mentor you. People want to invest. Um, and inherently, as much as I like to say, there's also people are inherently greedy in a good way. They want to make money. Um, and so when they're looking at your companies, they want to invest in young talent. And you've got this, you know, halo effect on you right now, uh, which makes you interesting. So Groupon was. Groupon Green, like our company was pretty much the exact same thing as Groupon, um, down to the colors, almost down to the logo. Um, and you know, we had a very good thesis that by the time they sued us, we'd be sold. Um, <laughs> we love this concept of Groupon. It was kind of democratizing people's ability um, to, to play, buy coupons. Uh, we were six months and seven days old. Uh, we, were th we went from three to 500 employees in six months from one to 18 countries in six months. Yeah, we raised the money, but we weren't happy to do it. If I could have built the company without raising money, I would, I would have. Um, I think because of what we see every day, we're looking at Uber's IPO today, and they're gonna be worth $80 billion or whatever it is. It's like we get kind of enamored by capital raise as a measure of success. For me, an exit is a measure of success, or the journey is the measure of success. A picture of Canadian GDP versus US GDP, and there was a gap. What that means is the gap occurs because we don't have in Canada the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Cisco's, I can go on and on and on and on. These incredible large technology companies that are driving wealth creation in the economy. And this organization was born to change that. And in a couple of sentences, it was created to create a new generation of super bold, super ambitious Canadian entrepreneurs. We built three signature programs to do that. The Next 36, which was about training really young people to start super ambitious startups. Next Founders came along, which was about accelerating existing experienced teams. And Next AI was next, which was about taking these amazing technologies, machine learning technologies, and accelerating and incubating companies in machine learning. A demo day right now for Prototype Day. We're about to go to all the demo tables. The pitches have just ended. And I'm in the bathroom. My name is Quinn, I am a recent graduate from the University of Toronto and I previously founded a company called Admin, it's a health technology company operating in some East Asia, provide primary health technology to those in need. Yeah, so I'm a co-founder on that, but that's what I've been doing for the last two years. For Next36, we're called Animo, and the idea is we leverage text and speech data to quantify psychological well-being or mental health. So essentially what we found is that using your Twitter data alone, you can identify signs of stress, anxiety, or depression up to two weeks before a clinical psychiatrist. Yeah, so like a uh, like symptom emerge. Exactly. But it's the yeah, cool thing is that you can actually identify certain markers before individuals are even conscious of them. So it's before you're even really aware of the fact that you might be entering a potentially depressed state, we can identify and say, hey, like maybe take these certain interventions now so that it doesn't get worse. For mental health, it's well, mental health and some of the downstream actually like, like physiological health, health effects, effects 
are very, very close to Exactly. Yeah. So things like stress, chronic stress, can lead to, lead to basically yeah. every chronic disease we know of right now, right? So it's not just like early as an indicator of potential future health issues, but we're actually teaching mental health in of itself. Yeah, because people don't know that stress literally degrades your immune Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I was so, in immunology, and like this yeah. was like half I literally just finished immunology. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Michelle's friends. We're just wrapping up prototype day. We had some awesome pitches. We're excited to see where everybody grows in the next few months. 